Welcome to this demo. Today we're going to build and walk through a complete multi-container application using Docker. The app we are creating is a simple task manager where we can add tasks and view a list of tasks stored in a database. This project showcases the power of containerization where every part of the app from the front end to the back end to the database runs in its own isolated environment. We will also be leveraging Docker to manage each of these services seamlessly. So all you need is a Docker installed. None of the tools or technologies used to implement the front end, back end or database. So for the front end, we just serve static HTML files using Nginx. The back end uses Node.js where we have programmed some APIs to interact with the database and serve content based off of get or post request and then the database is mongodb so i will give you just a quick demo of how everything works and what we'll have by the end of this so this is the task manager app we can add a task now this may seem pretty simple but in the back end what if you look at the logs Currently, we have an Nginx server running, and if you go to Docker and you choose to look at the logs, every time we visit this page, you can see that we are that this page is receiving a GET request, and it is being logged here. As you can see, that it received a GET request. So that is Nginx working. The server is displaying the GET request it received. Next, I added some logging to Node.js where it tells how many, ta where when it interacts with the MongoDB database that's running, it'll tell all the tasks it fetched. And every time we insert a task, it will show the object inserted into the mongodb database so i'll display that right here so when i insert a four you'll see a four we fetch four tasks and a new object got inserted i'll put five and you'll see it next we can see the mongodb database so I entered the MongoDB, uh, the container hosting MongoDB and using this command and we use the Mongo SH command to be able to interact with the, D, uh, the DBMS through the shell. So we can show DBs and we have our task DB and we've already been, we're already using it we can explore all of the objects within it and we can see all of our objects. So just to demonstrate, I'll add six and you will see six gets inserted in here. So we're going to learn how to make all of this, connect all these components together using Docker in a very simple to follow way. I will give you all the code in the Google Drive link that is given alongside this video. Let's get started. We start by creating a Docker network to allow all the containers to communicate with each other. You can list your currently running networks with the docker network ls command. I will create a new network called my network. All my containers that I will be running will be added to this network and will communicate on this network. For the front end, I'm using Nginx to serve our HTML and JavaScript files. This command creates a container named front end, attaches it to my network, maps the internal port 8080 on my host to port 80 on the container. We must specify the volume and map it to this directory within the container. So this is the volume where you will specify your front end files. This is this tells Nginx which uh, which files to serve 
to the user when we visit when it receives a request on port 8080. So here I'm just going to give the path to my front end uh, folder. So wherever you keep your index.html file, that's where you need to give the folder holding that file. So in this case, I'll just simply click copy as address as text. This is my index.html. We can go a little bit more into that a bit later. But for now, let's just get the project working and then I'll explain in more depth what we are doing. So simply replace the path, this path to the front end part with the path to where you keep your index.html. We need to map it to this path within the container so that Nginx knows which file to serve. Let's go ahead and run this command. If you don't have Nginx installed, the docker run command will install and run a container of Nginx for you. You can see the pull is complete. It downloaded the newer image and the Nginx server is now running within the container. Next, let's go ahead and create our container for our database. So we use MongoDB as if you don't know, MongoDB is a NoSQL database that we will use to keep track of our task data. So this is just a simple one command to set this up. We set up MongoDB first because in our Node.js code we need to connect to the database so the database needs to be running before we run our Node.js we create our Node.js container. Next, we, we have finished pulling and creating our MongoDB container. Before we explore the workings of the app more, I will get our backend working, which provides some APIs in order, to, in order for our front end to insert new tasks and retrieve our old tasks. We can create a new terminal here I have built a docker file. It is pretty simple. We download the node image. We specify our working directory. We copy all of our dependencies specified in this package.json. These are our dependencies. And then we run npm install. We copy all of our files. And when we create a container, it'll run npm start within the container. So we will now build our image based off of our code. Oh, wait, you need to make sure CD into, you need to make sure that you're in the, before you run the Docker build command, make sure that you place your index.js and your Docker file all in the same directory. So just to be super clear, you would, I have only two folders in my file system. So you're gonna get these two exact folders on Google Drive when you download this. So it'll be front end with one folder and back end with these three files. So front end with one file and back end with three files. So make sure when you're in the back, you're in the back end file and then you run the Docker build command. It'll make an image with the name backend image and it'll make it based off of all the docker file within the current directory. Let us run that. That'll take some moments. Now we will run the docker run command to run our backend image. As you can see, we have connected to MongoDB successfully because we made our MongoDB container first. And now our entire app will be running and working. I can verify the data in MongoDB by entering the container and using the MongoDB shell. So first, we will add one task.
we can see the task got we can see the task got inserted successfully and it fetched one task from the database we can run this a docker exec command right here we can run this docker exec command to verify the data by entering the container using the mongodb shell Oh, I did not give the, you need to give your container ID of your, so the, your container ID will just be here, this one. Or if you have Docker desktop, you can easily find your container ID. Go to Mongo and it'll be this 9C whatever, 9CB0D6. So just replace this with the Mongo container ID. You don't even need to do the whole thing, that's a lot. So just the first like 10 characters are more than enough. Now we run this. We can use the command, we can use the command use task DB as all of our records are inserted in a database named task DB. We can also do show DBs to see all the DBs so there's task db and you can see all of the objects within this database with this command db tasks.find.pretty and we see our one has been inserted we can insert two our we can, nginx got another get request to got our node.js server application received another request and another record got inserted into our database so now that we have the app running. Let's summarize how everything works together, focusing on how the front end, back end, and database communicate. In the front end, we use this line const API URL equals localhost port 3000 to define the endpoint that our app communicates with. This is where all the tasks are fetched from and sent to. Anytime a user adds a task or views the task list, our front end sends an HTTP request to the back end server, which is running on port 3000 of my local machine. This is how our front end talks to the back end using simple API requests to interact with the task data stored in the database. On the back end, we have a couple important parts to highlight. First, our Express.js server defines necessary API routes like get for fetching tasks and post for adding new tasks. These endpoints handle the requests from the front end. Then there's the line where we, where we use Mongoose to connect to our MongoDB database. This connection allows the back end to query the MongoDB database for task data and insert new tasks into the database. Mongoose makes it simple to model and interact with MongoDB documents directly through our code. Now for our Docker file. It's what makes our backend run inside its own container. Starting with the node 14 base image, we copy over the backend code, install all the dependencies, and then expose port 3000 to make sure this app is accessible to other containers in the network. The command npm start runs the application and Docker handles everything else ensuring our backend runs smoothly inside a containerized environment. In essence, our frontend sends requests to the backend via API calls and the backend talks to the MongoDB database using Mongoose to store and retrieve tasks. All of this is containerized using Docker which makes the deployment of this app clean and efficient. And there you have it, a, m a simple multi-container task list application 
with a front end, back end, and database all running in separate Docker containers. This setup is a great example of how microservices architecture works where each service is isolated, but they work together seamlessly through networking. If you want to try this yourself, I'll have the code and Docker commands linked below. Give it a shot and let me know how it goes. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more development tutorials.